we're going to still do the roll calls for things, just because a couple of us are remote. But once we're all back in here, which I hope will be by the end of the month, we can give Madam Clerk a little bit of a break. Not have to roll call everything. Um, so. And Thank you for your help on tonight and last night. That was that was something else. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't you didn't miss much. Now, Michelle, who did, did we lose this beautiful picture under you? Is it like in Murphy's basement or something right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. I like that piece. Hello, Ricardo. Absolutely. Matt, uh, Matt O'Malley, can you hear me? I can hear you loudly and clearly, Michael. I can't see you, though. The only Zoom video I can see is Liz B. Don't worry, just uh, you're, you're unmuted, just an FYI. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm on, Council O'Malley. It's Andrea. Hello, Andrea. We'll get started in see just next, a moment. See you next week. Excellent. <laughs> hey, Liz. Hey, Flaherty. Hey, Andrea. <laughs> Good to see you the other night. I you too. Good afternoon, Andrea. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. So, um, Mike and Andrea, if you guys don't have your video started, then it'll just be Liz's image that we see. There we go. There we go. Perfect. There we go. <laughs> and let me make sure. I'm going to do a quick test with Kenzie. Just do a countdown to make sure that you can hear. Can you hear me? Testing one, two, three. Yes. Perfect. Yep. All right, we're going to start in just a moment. Uh, thanks, everybody. Frank and Ricardo will be back in a second. Frank will be back. Let me get started. Let me just, I'm just going to make sure. And uh, if you need packets, I know a bunch of you guys have your laptops, but uh, your lady's going to drop off packets in just a moment. We'll, we'll just go up there, grab a quick pick before we get started. Maybe, maybe all the way up in the back, Pete, if you can. <laughs> if anyone wants to be, would you turn your attention to the back of the hall to young Peter Favorito, who's my new West Roxbury liaison, for those who don't know him. That's even worse. <laughs> 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 Great. 
Great. Thank you, Peter. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're good to go. Everyone is? I see Liz. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Ayadella Chamber. It's been a while since we've said that. My name is Matt O'Malley, and I am the City Council President pro tempore. Uh, today is May 5th, 2021, and we are holding the Boston City Council meeting in a hybrid fashion. Uh, several councillors are joining us via Zoom, and the rest are in the chamber. Uh, in accordance with Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order modifying certain requirements of the open meeting law, this council meeting, again, is being conducted in a hybrid fashion. Viewers can watch the council meeting live on YouTube by visiting boston.gov slash city dash council dash TV. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll to ascertain the presence of a quorum? Can you hear? I can't hear. Not really. It's a little faded. It's it's because the mics aren't on for the roll call. But I'm sorry. Uh, okay, that's all right. Clerk is Councilor on. Councilor Braden, um, she called your name. Councilor Braden, just say say you're present. Present. What? Thank what you. Did he say? <laughs> 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 Councilor Braden is present. Please, Madam Clerk. <laughs> Councilor Campbell. Present. Thank you. Councilor Edwards. Present. Councilor Asabi George. Present. Councilor Flaherty. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Councilor Flynn. Here. Yeah. Councilor Mejia. Here. Yeah. Councilor O'Malley. Present. And Councilor Wu. Present. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Um, in lieu of clergy, once again, our wonderful esteemed clerk will be delivering the invocation. Afterwards, we will recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Madam Clerk, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. Blessed are the just, for they have their reward in indestructible integrity. Blessed are they who labor in the vineyards of the public realm, for they shall be remembered. Blessed are they who love their nation enough to praise its strengths and criticize its weakness, for they shall be made wise. Blessed are public officials who are responsive to the needs of these, the least of the people, for they shall be deputies of the community. Blessed are they who serve the public good, for their reward is in being used. Blessed are the powerful who acknowledge that their power is both a gift and a responsibility for they know the binding obligation of their bounty. Blessed are they who rebuke narrow self-interest to sustain the common weal, for they are the patriots the nation needs. And today, we especially ask for your blessing upon the members of the Boston City Council as they continue their good work on behalf of the people of this city on a hill. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk, for those inspiring words. I would now invite everyone who is able to please rise as we uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, we are now moving on to the first order of business, which is the approval of the minutes from last week's meeting. Seeing and hearing no discussion on the matter, the chair moves to approve the minutes from the last meeting as presented. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. Councillor Baker, yes. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Sabi George. Yes. Councillor Sabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Mejia. Yes. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Yes. Councillor Wu, yes. Mr. President, the approval of the minutes was passed unanimously. Thank you very much. 
Uh, now moving along to communications from Her Honor the Mayor. Madam Clerk, would you please read Docket 0630 and place it before the committee? Certainly. Docket 0630, message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $526,120 in the form of a grant for the FFY21 Title III Caregiver Services. Awarded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, passed to the Mass Executive Office of Elder Affairs to be administered by the Age Strong Commission. The grant will fund a subgrant for caregiver services to seniors and grandparents raising their grandchildren. Thank you. Docket 0630 will be referred to the Committee on Strong Women, Families, and Communities. Madam Clerk, moving on to Docket 0631. Docket 0631, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $1,750,000 in the form of a grant for the FY21 DFD State Training Program, awarded by the Massachusetts Department of Fire Services to be administered by the Boston Fire Department. The grant will fund the Boston Fire Training Division and Academy activities. This state earmark supplements city funds for training, supplies, and materials. Thank you very much. Docket 0631 shall be referred to the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice. Madam Clerk, would you now please read Docket 0632? Thank you. Docket 0632, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $4,091 in the form of a grant for the FY21 Title III-D for Health Promotion and Disease Prevention, awarded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, passed through the Mass Executive Office of Elder Affairs to be administered by the Age Strong Commission. The grant will fund health promotion and disease prevention programs. Thank you very much. The chair now recognizes Councillor Liz Braden, the chair of the Committee on Strong Women, Families, and Communities. Chair Braden, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, chair, um, Mr. President. Um, I request that we suspend and pass this docket for the funds to be dispersed to the Age Strong Commission to support their work in health promotion and disease prevention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair Braden. Uh, the chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 0632. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Docket 0632, Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Aye. Councillor Baker, aye. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Asabi George. Yes. Councillor Asabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Mejia. Yes. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Yes. Councillor Wu, yes. Mr. President, docket number 0632. Um, passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Moving along to reports of public officers and others. Madam Clerk, would you please read dockets 0633 through 0637? Thank you. Docket 0633 notices received from the City Clerk in accordance with Chapter 6 of the Ordinances of 1979 regarding action taken by the Mayor on papers acted upon by the City Council at its meeting of April 14, 2021. Docket number 0634, notice was received from the auditing department involving, <clears throat> I'm sorry, providing a list of fiscal 2020 reallocations made by the mayor prior to April 15, 2021, for the purpose of continuing operations. Docket 0635, communication was received from the city clerk of the filing by the Boston Redevelopment Authority of the application for the report and decision on Old Colony Phase 4 and Phase 5, Chapter 121A project. Docket 0636, commun communication was received from the city clerk of the filing by the Boston Redevelopment Authority on the application for the report and decision on Mid Mildred Haley Corporation, Chapter 121A project. And docket number 0637, Communication was received from the City Clerk of the filing by the Boston Redevelopment Authority, the third amendment to the report and decision of the Council on Elders Housing, Chapter 121A project. 
Thank you, Madam Clerk. Docket 0633 through 0637 shall be placed on file. Next, we are going to discuss matters recently heard for possible action. Madam Clerk, would you please read and place before the body Docket 0559. Thank you. Docket 0559, message and order authorizing the City of Boston's Conservation Commission to receive property located at 108 Walter Street in the Rosendale neighborhood of Boston and identified by the City of Boston's Assessing Department parcel identification number 20051-95000, known as the property. The property is currently in the care and custody of Boston Planning and Development Agency, known as BPDA, and is located in the Rosendale Wetland Urban Wild and will be a valued addition to the natural neighborhood assets. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The Chair now recognizes Councillor Michelle Wu, Chair of the Committee on Planning, Development and Transportation. Chair Wu, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we had a, a great virtual hearing a few days ago about this parcel, which is an incredible success story and many years in the, in the making now, thanks to advocacy from so many community organizations. This is the 108 Walter Street parcel in Roslindale, as, as you heard, which is now going to be added to extend the existing Roslindale wetlands. Um, an adjacent parcel is going to go out for RFP for affordable housing with much community support and input as well. Um, and so I want to thank colleagues for being there. Of course, um, Councillors O'Malley and Arroyo, who represent the right nearby in the area, um, Councillor Liz Braden, Councillor Michael Flaherty, I know Councillor Ed Flynn just missed us because it was such a quick hearing. Um, and we were joined by representatives from uh, the BPDA, Real Estate and Community Development Office, as well as uh, Planning Office for Parks and Recreation. So I want to thank everyone who's been involved and recommend passage of this today. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, the Chair of the Committee seeks acceptance of the Committee Report and passage of Docket 0559. Uh, seeing no discussion on this matter, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Docket 0559, Councillor Arroyo. Yes. yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Aye. Councillor Baker, aye. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Sabi George. Yes. Councillor Sabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Mejia. Yes. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Yes. Councillor Wu, yes. Mr. President, docket number 0559 has passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all involved. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Madam Clerk, please read docket 0234. Thank you. Docket 0234, order for hearing to review the women's specific outreach and health care programming to combat the op opioid crisis. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The Chair now recognizes Councillor Liz Braden, the Chair of the Committee on Strong Women, Families and Communities. Chair Braden, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we held a hearing yesterday on the, in the Committee on Strong Women, Families and Communities to review the women-specific outreach and healthcare programming to combat the opioid crisis. Uh, the Committee heard from a panel with a wide range of experience and expertise from the Administration and representatives in the health, uh, medical healthcare community around substance use and addictions. Uh, we heard from Jen Tracy, who's the director of the Office of Recovery Services, Stephanie Acker Hausman, inter interim director of homeless services for the Public Health Commission, Pam Gonzalez of the Work Working Opportunities for Women program uh, at Project um, Project Place, Larissa. Pa I'm Paola Tino, instructor of the case and case manager for the Project Places Community Reentry for Women's Program crew, and Dr. Eileen Costello, medical director of So Far Program, uh, supporting families through addiction and recovery at Boston Medical Center, and Kelly Sia, director Dr. Kelly Sia of the director of the Boston Medical Center's Project Respect, Recovery, Empowerment, Social Services, Prenatal. Uh, care, education, and community treatment. A really impressive panel of, uh, of experts were there to testify. The panel provided information on programs, short and long-term ideas concerning women in recovery. We talked about the need for more funding. 
extending wraparound services, mental health and educational challenges, as well as the need for an in, uh, increase in nightly mobile, mobile service. Substance use disorder has, was particularly complicated implications and co-occurring health concerns for young women, pregnant women, and women with postpartum depression. At this time, I would like to thank my co our colleague and acknowledge her leadership and of the lead sponsor, uh, Councillor Anissa Sabi george um, And as chair of the Committee on Strong Women, Families and Communities, my recommendation to the full council is that, is that this matter remain in committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair Braden. Uh, the chair now recognizes the at-large councillor from Dorchester, Councillor Anissa Sadby george The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. I'd like to thank Council Braden for chairing this hearing and for all of our panelists who joined us yesterday. The hearing was certainly heartbreaking and informative as we learned from our practitioners on the ground. This opioid crisis is an uncompromising epidemic that has destabilized so many lives. We are seeing an increase in young women struggling with addiction and also seeing a rise in sexual violence against them. Sorry. A rise in sexual violence against them and life-threatening or traumatic complications with pregnancy. We have to end this crisis. We've been living with it for too many generations and aren't doing enough to protect our future generations. This conversation yesterday highlighted the need for more holistic, long-term support systems, not just for the women dealing with substance use disorder, but also their entire families. We need more recovery programs that allow women to stay with their children, more programs connected to self-awareness and development as the, foundation for, as the foundation for workforce training and support services that work together seamlessly. I hope that we can keep these, those recommendations in mind as we continue this budget process. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor Sabi George. Any further discussion on this docket? Uh, seeing none, this uh, docket, which is docket 0234, shall remain in the Committee on Strong Women, Families, and Communities. Madam Clerk, would you please read dockets 0524 through 0531, as well as 0537 together? Docket 0524 through 0526, orders for the FY22 operating budget, including annual appropriations for departmental operations for the school department and for other post-employment benefits known as OPEB. <clears throat> Docket number 0527 through 0529, orders for capital fund transfer appropriations. Docket 0530 and through 0531, Orders for the capital budget, including loan orders and lease purchase agreements. Docket 0537, message and order authorizing a limit for the Boston Center for Youth and Families revolving fund for fiscal year 2022 to pay salaries and benefits of employees and to purchase supplies and equipment necessary to operate the city hall child care. This revolving fund shall be credited with any and all receipts from the tuition paid by parents or guardians for children enrolled at the center. Receipts and resulting expenditures from this fund shall not exceed $850,000. Um, the chair now recognizes Councillor Kenzie Bach, the chair of the Committee on Ways and Means. Chair Bach, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Um, since our last council meeting, the uh, Committee on Ways and Means has held two hearings and three working sessions on the budget. Um, we held a hearing last Thursday morning on arts and culture and tourism um, to uh, departments which have revolving funds, which was the original reason they were on our list, but then have also seen significant increases um, for targeted uh, investments in the proposed budget. So we talked to them and we also talked to the law department um, in that hearing as well. And, uh, and then in the afternoon, we had our hearing on the capital budget with the public facilities department focused in particular on the capital investments in the many departments that they partner with for their capital work. Um, so I really want to thank councillors for coming and asking such good questions and being there at those. Um, since then, on Friday morning and then uh, also yesterday, um, we've had a couple of working sessions preparing our questions list for the upcoming departmental hearings. And we'll have a couple more of those on Thursday and Friday. Um, so I would just remind colleagues to either come or ask um, your staff to send over your questions in advance so we can read them into the record tomorrow and Friday. Um, and then before our next council meeting, we will be having 
a hearing with Environment and Landmarks on Monday morning, with the Boston Police Department on Monday afternoon, and then two with BPS, um, continuing our eight with them uh, on Tuesday. So I'm um, grateful to everybody on the council and also the departments for their participation, and uh, the budget process continues. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thank you for your great leadership uh, in this space. Dockets 0524 through 0531, as well as docket 0537, shall remain in the Committee on Ways and Means. Moving right along to motions, orders, and resolutions. Madam Clerk, would you please read docket 0638 into the record. Docket 0638, Council of Bach offered the following ordinance to create the Boston Commemorative Commemorization Commission. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. The Chair now recognizes the District Council from Beacon Hill. Councilor Kenzie Bach, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. President. I'm getting used to doing this in person again. Um, I, I want to start today with a quotation um, written in 1774, two years before the 1776 uh, Declaration of Independence. Um, the quotation runs, in every human breast, God has implanted a principle which we call love of freedom it is impatient of oppression and pants for deliverance. Um, that's actually a line in a letter by Phyllis Wheatley, um, who would know what she was talking about because it was only a year earlier, actually no, it was that year of 1774, that she was finally free from slavery, which she'd been in since arriving on the shores of Boston in 1761. A year before she wrote that line, Phyllis Wheatley became the first uh, black person in America to publish a book of poetry and also the first black woman um, and she was a member here in Boston of the Old South Meeting House um, and really uh, a celebrated uh, poet in her day who was then quickly forgotten um, and then recovered in more recent years. Um, and uh, she's, she's actually one of the three figures in the Boston Women's Memorial in the Commonwealth Ave Mall. Um, but I would say that probably relatively few of our Boston school children know Phyllis Wheatley and have spent time reading her work. Um, and I, I just want to read that line again in every human breast, God has implanted a principle which we call love of freedom. It is impatient of oppression and pants for deliverance. That idea of an embedded sense of liberty might remind you of that line written a couple years later, you know, that all, all of us are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, and I've just been thinking um, a lot about the fact that in a couple of years, in 2023, it'll be the 250th anniversary of the publication of Phyllis Wheatley's poetry book. And I think it would be great if our BPS kids were learning about her in school or saw an exhibit about her in their local library branch um, or maybe went on a special tour of Boston's Black Heritage Trail uh, or, um, or to the Old South Meeting House in her honor. Um, it would be great to me if by the time we got to 2026, to America's 250th birthday, and people were reading those stirring words, the Declaration of Independence, we had our students saying, oh, right, you know, there was a black woman saying that in Boston a couple years earlier. And she saw the logical connection already there between the revolution and the end of slavery um, that the more famous author, Thomas Jefferson, couldn't see. Um, I, I tell this anecdote just to say, I'm proposing a, comm a commemoration commission today because I think that Boston shouldn't miss the chance to celebrate our upcoming revolutionary anniversaries from Wheatley's chapbook publication and the Boston Tea Party in 1773 all the way through 1776, which is gonna be commemorated in 2026 in a way that tells the whole story and makes all of our residents feel connected to this city's history. And I also think we need to plan in the same inclusive way to celebrate the 400th anniversary of the city of Boston in 2030, um, and that we need to identify other anniversaries in the upcoming decade of significance to all Boston's communities that we should be marking with civic pride, preservation, and opportunities to drive tourism and economic recovery. Um, if the council will indulge me, I just want to say a little bit because it's an expansive uh, proposal um, about sort of the three key reasons I see to do this, which are really educational, preservation, uh, pre preservationist, and economic. So the educational reasons I've tried to illustrate through my example about Wheatley, I think our Boston uh, kids and residents deserve to know those stories, to own their heritage here. And we have a huge number of historical resources in the city that go untapped. So we've got papers and items in the BPL, in the Boston City Archives, private collection. There's actually a lot of local community archives that have tried to get going to save um, like materials related to the LGBTQ community, to women that often can get thrown out when they're 50 to 100 years old and they never make it past that point. Um, we need not just to save that material, but to actually weave it into a rich tapestry of historical storytelling. And that takes curat curatorial focus and attention and, yes, resources. 
Um, and as a historian myself, when I think about, you know, we're coming up on the academic focused hearings for BPS, you know, I think one of the best ways to teach students how to think critically is to expose them to the work of putting the pieces together of primary and secondary sources in, and doing the work of history. It's, it's a treasure hunt, it's a lesson in perspective um, and uh, in writing all at the same time. And I think that sense of connection to history that often you can convey in a moment of anniversary is part of what can get students excited about that work um, and we should take advantage of the chance to spark that interest. Um, the second reason is preservationist. It's preservation month, May is preservation month. Um, and I think we've been hearing loud and clear from our communities that um, we really don't have the resources and tools there to save many of the um, historical treasures of the built environment and our immigrant communities are, you know, in Chinatown and our black communities, we just, we put the Landmarks Commission in place and it's wonderful and we did that at the Bicentennial and now it's time again to really update those tools to think about how to do inclusive and effective preservation in the Boston of today. Um, and the last is economic reasons. You know, I think when we think about putting Boston's best put forward economically, certainly in my district, folks will talk about life sciences and um, the educational resources and the medical ones. But actually, history is a big driver of tourism and of spending in the city of Boston. Um, and, you know, Philadelphia made maybe, definitely tens, maybe hundreds of millions off of the bicentennial. Um, there's both federal money available and the ability to really drive uh, a, a, tourism and it's something that they're trying to sort of own the 250th again, but there's no reason that Boston shouldn't be in the mix there and that we should, shouldn't be filling hotel room, room staff by the diverse, um, you know, union hotel staff that we have in Boston. Um, and, and also show people, again, how to do this in a way that tells the full story, making space for indigenous history and black history and so much along the way. And, and then really, I think, building towards 2030, where I'd love people all over the country and the world to be saying, oh, I've got to get to Boston in 2030 because it's their quadricentennial and they're really pulling out all the stops. Um, but that kind of stuff, it doesn't happen by accident or automatically. Like, to take the best advantage of these opportunities for inclusive celebrations, preservation investments, and economic infusions, um, we really need a commission. If you look at the list of departments, this work is all over our departments, and frankly, right now, it tends to fall between the barrels. Um, and I think that we should really start to change that with a Boston Commemoration Commission for the decade ahead. So um, I had talked about this in concept last year. I'm back with an ordinance proposal this year and looking forward to the work with our chair of GovOps uh, in the months ahead um, and, and with all of you. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bach. Is there any further discussion on docket 0638? Uh, so to our, our virtual colleagues, uh, if you'd like to speak on this, let me know. If you just want to add your name, I'll get to that in one moment. Okay, great. So no further discussion on 0638. Would any councillors wish to add their name? Madam Clerk, please add Councillor Arroyo, Councillor Baker, Councillor Braden, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Saibi George, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Mejia, Councillor Wu. Please add the chair's name. And docket 0638 shall be referred to the Committee on Government Operations. Madam Clerk, would you now please read docket 0639. Docket 0639, Councilors Flynn and Flaherty offer the following order for hearing to discuss increasing fines for large house parties disturbing neighbors' quality of life. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. The Chair now recognizes the District Council from South Boston. Councilor Flynn, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President, and um, thank you to Councilor Flaherty for joining me on this important hearing order. We called for this hearing order because the partying, excessive partying in South Boston is out of control. During the pandemic, we've had a lot of young people that didn't social distance and kept on these parties where 60, 80 people would be in a home or in, a, in the neighboring yard. Um, over the last several weekends, we've had neighbors call 911, which is the proper thing to do to report this, and um, we've had several hundred calls each weekend. It's having a devastating impact on the quality of life for residents, especially our seniors that need their sleep, persons with disabilities, and a lot of young children, students, that need to get their sleep so that they can get up in the morning and function and be a productive student. 
the young people in my community are showing very, um, very little respect for the residents with these parties. I ask them, you know, would they have these parties back in their home state of New Jersey or Connecticut or New York? Think of your neighbor as your grandmother or your grandfather. Would you want someone um, keeping your grandmother up till two o'clock in the morning? And if the answer is no, why should you do it to my constituents, to my residents? So you can probably sense the frustration in my voice about this. And I've been working closely with the Boston police, with inspectional services, with my colleagues in government, Council of Flaherty. But what we're proposing is to increase the fines on absentee landlords that allow this to happen under, governor's, under Governor Baker's COVID announcement. Um, there could be fines up to $500 which is appropriate. But myself and Council of Flaherty want to increase that going forward to $1,000 first offense, $2,000 second offense, $3,000 third offense. And maybe these young people will get the hint that we mean business and our job is to stand up and advocate and fight for our constituents, especially our seniors, persons with disabilities and children. It's unconscionable that these young people continue to have parties and throw their trash on the, on the ground, pizza boxes, brings rodents, pest control issues, trash. So it's about quality of life issues. I plan to be out this weekend with inspectional services, with Boston police. I wanna thank inspectional services and Boston police for doing a good job. And the procedure is when there's a loud, loud, large party, call 911. Boston police will respond, um, and after several times of, of their response, it can be placed on a problem property at inspectional services for review. So this is an issue we take very seriously. I wanna thank you to my colleague, Council of Flaherty, but more importantly, I wanna thank the residents of South Boston for their advocacy on this. Myself and Council of Flaherty are not going away anywhere. We're going to advocate and fight for our constituents. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councillor Flynn. The chair now recognizes the at-large councillor from South Boston, Councillor Flaherty. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Thanks to the previous speaker and the uh, lead sponsor on this. We've been working on this for a while, and um, we've had a number of community meetings. Uh, we've encouraged folks to call 311. Uh, folks obviously have been uh, calling 911 as well. Just a few weeks ago, there was uh, 600 911 calls between Friday and Saturday night. We've worked closely, obviously, with the captain uh, and uh, our offices down in C6, as well as the community service offices. And uh, my experience as an at-large council, it's not limited to the community of South Boston. Uh, we've had instances in the South End, uh, the North End, uh, Charlestown, uh, Savin Hill, anywhere where we're densely populated and there's uh, roof decks and back porches. Um, and there's been sort of, a, a, I guess, a, a, there's been new residents coming in and, not necessarily being um, courteous and respectful to their neighbors. So we're sort of at our wits end as to sort of what's working and what's not working. We've tried sort of all the traditional uh, conventional means of uh, having the community groups and the civic associations and um, inspectional services and our police department meeting and discussing this. And I think that Council Flynn is, is on to let's, you know, let's start to maybe uh, target uh, the, the landlords, in particular the absentee landlords, to get some accountability. Um, uh, they're charging exorbitant rents uh, from these tenants. Tenants probably think that because they're paying those large rents, they can pretty much do whatever they want when they want. And the parties, it's not just folks pre-gaming in someone's uh, living room and then going out to a local establishment and maybe coming back a little while. These, um, these parties are uh, they're, uh, significant in size and they go till 3.30, 4.30, 5 in the morning. So uh, we're not New York um, and uh, you know it's, it's just not uh, sustainable behavior in our community where we have our elderly and we have young families trying to raise their kids. And so one would think that um, you know, reasonable people would sort of meet their neighbors halfway, uh, and, but it's not happening. So unfortunately, uh, we need to look at um, our fee and fine structure to see whether or not we could bring about some more accountability from landlords and tenants. And, and maybe uh, there's something that's put into the lease. So uh, there's maybe some type of contract between the landlord and the tenant. And quite frankly, until you know, uh, folks start losing their first, last and security, probably not gonna really get their attention. So uh, look forward to an expedited hearing on this. 
want to reach out to obviously district colleagues to see what, if anything, is working in their respective districts because it's not a problem that's just limited uh, to uh, South Boston. I've, I've dealt with it uh, in other neighborhoods in the past. So, uh, and uh, please feel free to sign on. Uh, it's an important issue, but it's not just limited to to, uh, to one community. We're all experiencing, particularly in the densely populated neighborhoods. Thank you, Mr. President, and thanks to the lead sponsor, Councilor Flynn. Thank you very much, Councilor Flaherty. Is there any further discussion on docket 0639? Um, our virtual colleagues, please raise the, your physical hand if you'd like to speak on it, and colleagues who are in the chamber, um, just press the speak button if anyone would like to speak, seeing no further dis Oh, did you, I'm sorry, Councilor Campbell, did you want to speak? Oh, just add the name, thank you. Seeing no further discussion, we will now add names as co-sponsors uh, to docket 0639. Madam Clerk, please add Councilor Arroyo, Councilor Baker, Councilor Bach, Councilor Edwards, Councilor Braden, Councilor Campbell, Councilor Saibi George, Councilor Mejia, Councilor Wu, please add the chair's name as well. And docket 0639 shall be referred to the Committee on City and Neighborhood Services. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you now please read docket 0640. Docket 0640, Councilors Flynn Braden offer the following resolution in support of House Docket Number 4120, an act relative to the educational needs of students whose education was negatively impacted by the COVID-19 emergency. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk. The Chair now recognizes the District Council from South Boston. Councilor Flynn, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, May, Mr. President, may I suspend Rule 12 and add, add yourself um, as an original third co-sponsor to this resolution? Councillor Flynn moves for the suspension of the rules and the addition of the chair as an original co-sponsor. Seeing no objection, uh, I am hereby added. Thank you, Councillor Flynn. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, this resolution is in support of a state bill, HD 4120, which is an act relative to the edu educational needs of students whose education was negatively impacted by COVID-19 emergency, which would allow students to stay for an additional academic year if their education has been impacted by the pandemic. COVID-19 pandemic has deeply impacted all of our students as they are forced to adjust to remote learning and changing learning environments. As a result, many students have experienced tremendous learning loss and felt unprepared. Students with disabilities are particularly impacted by COVID-19 and learning loss as well, as many require in-person instruction and service. Many of these stu students would also like to stay for an additional year, but some may reach age 22 years of age and will be aged out of the school system by 2020. That is the case of one of my constituents in South Boston his name is Jack, and I know his grandmother very well. Her name is Bernadette. My mother and father see them on Broadway almost every day, and they talk to him. And my mother and father have their grandson, who also has um, special needs. Under the bill, students who are scheduled to graduate in 2021 or 2022 from a district high school or charter school can opt into an additional year of schooling if the student or the guardian determines that that student's education has been negatively impacted by the pandemic. This bill would also allow students receiving special education who will be 22 and are due to graduate in, in 2021 or 22 to opt into an additional academic year. Um, the sponsor at the State House is Ed Coppinger. Um, HD 4120 would also help learning loss and give students and their parents the choice to stay for an additional year. I hope that we can suspend and pass this resolution today so that we can send our support to the State House. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councillor Flynn. The Chair now recognizes the District Council from Alston Brighton. Councillor Braden, the floor is yours. Thank you, Councillors Flynn and O'Malley, for your initiative and partnering uh, in supporting this important bill at the Legislature. Um, I have a background in special education. I worked at Perkins School for the Blind for 16 years and I'm very familiar with the concept of learning loss. Very often our special needs students get summer program. They, they, they attend school for six weeks in the summer so that they do not lose skills or, or uh, learning uh, gains. 
over the summer period under normal circumstances. Uh, and in the context of the COVID uh, pandemic, where so many of our students have been uh, taught remotely, um, and, and especially our students with, students with special needs, this, this has raised some very, very um, important concerns about the, the lack of, um, of progress or uh, the loss of skills that they may have had even before the pandemic. So I really want to go on the record as supporting this uh, very important piece of legislation. Um, and, and I thank you for the partnership, um, Councillor Flynn and Councillor O'Malley. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Braden. Um, colleagues, please indulge me as I bend the rules slightly to speak very briefly from the dais on this issue. I'm delighted to partner with Councillors Flynn and Braden. Um, this is affecting individuals in my district. It's affecting individuals in everyone's district. If you are a 22 or 21 year old student, um, there is a safeguard that's put in place that you can extend that learning time. If you're 19 or 20, that hasn't yet been determined and this bill seeks to rectify that. We're talking of course about the highest, highest need students, the individuals for whom remote learning was not an option. So I've spoken similarly with a very dear friend uh, who has two sons in this situation. Uh, obviously we will be moving through the suspension of the rules and adoption of this resolution. But I also am going to make this a large part of my uh, questioning as it relates to our budget process with BPS because BPS has a responsibility to these families to be able to support their kids who have just been devastated by learning loss as many kids have but particularly these kids uh, for whom remote learning was never an option. So um, thank you. Is there any further discussion on docket 0640? Would any councillors wish to add their name to docket 0640? Madam Clerk, please add councillors Arroyo, Baker, Bach, Campbell, Edwards, Asaibi George, Mejia, Wu, Flaherty, and uh, Councillors Flynn, Graydon, and myself seek suspension of the rules and adoption of Docket 0640. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Docket 0640, Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Aye. Councillor Baker, aye. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Sabi George. Yes. Councillor Sabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Mejia. Yes. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. And Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Yes. Councillor Wu, yes. Mr. President, docket number 0640 was adopted unanimously. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Uh, moving right along to docket 0641. Madam Clerk, would you please place that before our body? Thank you. Docket 0641, Councilor Sabi George offered the following resolution, recognizing May as Mental Health Awareness Month. Thank you very much. The chair now recognizes the at-large council from Dorchester, Councilor Nisa Sabi George, the floor is yours. we also have concerns with our mental health. The pandemic certainly has brought on new levels of anxiety and stress, has compounded existing mental illness for many due to the disruption of social networks, and has challenged all of us to see how essential it is to be mentally well. I am proud that this resolution, we will once again declare May as Mental Health Awareness Month. It is critical that we all have access to resources, to therapists, to support groups, to bolster our, our mental health. Too, ma too, many people do not, too many people do not receive treatment because of stigma and lack of access. I filed this resolution to encourage our residents to access the resources they need to lead full and healthy lives and to continue to push for a more robust network of mental health clinicians available to our residents. I strongly recommend anyone listening to reach out to your community health center or NAMI Boston if you are looking for mental health support. If anyone is in crisis, please call the best clinicians at 1-800-981-4357. I seek suspension of the rules and passage of this resolution. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councillor Sabi George. Is there any further discussion on 0641? Seeing none, would any councillors wish to add their name before we vote? Madam Clerk, please add Councillor Arroyo, Councillor Baker, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Bach, Councillor Mejia, Councillor Wu, 
Councillor Braden, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Flaherty, please add the chair's name. And Councillor Sabi George seeks suspension of the rules and adoption of Docket 0641. <laughs> Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Docket 0641, Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Aye. Councillor Baker, aye. Councillor yes. Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. I think you skipped Councillor Braden. Oh my, Councillor. <laughs> so sorry. No worries. So you're right before me. I'm so sorry. I don't know how I did that, but Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Asabi George. Yes. Councillor Asabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. <laughs> Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Mejia. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Yes. Councillor Wu, yes. Mr. President, docket number 0641 was adopted unanimously. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Uh, moving right along to docket 0642, would you please place that before our body? Thank you. Docket 0642, Councillor Asabi George offer the following resolution, recognizing Teacher Appreciation Week. Ma uh, the chair now recognizes the at-large councillor from Dorchester, Councillor Savi George. The floor is yours. Thank you uh, once again, Mr. President. This week, the first week of May, is Teacher Appreciation Week. As a former teacher and chair of the Education Committee, I know how important our teachers are and how their work is often underappreciated. To all of our educators, especially our Boston Public Schools educators, thank you for showing up for our students and doing your very best during this pandemic. We appreciate your efforts to make your virtual and in-person classrooms safe and affirming learning spaces, to support each of your students emotionally and academically, and to show up for your colleagues. I hope that all of our teachers in Boston know that we are continuing our efforts towards building high-quality schools and making sure that we're working appropriately on our Boston Public Schools budget. I seek suspension of the rules and passage of this resolution. Thank you very much, Councillor Asabi George. Is there any further discussion on docket 0642? Seeing none, would any councillors wish to add their name as a co-sponsor? Madam Clerk, please add Councillor Arroyo, Councillor Baker, Councillor Bach, Councillor Braden, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Asabi George, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Mejia, Councillor Wu. Please add the chair's name as well. Uh, and Councillor Asabi George seeks suspension of the rules and adoption of docket 0642. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Docket 0642, Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Aye. Councillor Baker, aye. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, uh, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Councillor Asabi George. Yes. Councillor Asabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Mejia. Yes. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Yes. Councillor Wu, yes. Mr. President, the docket number 0642 was adopted unanimously. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Uh, finally, our final motion uh, order or resolution in this case is docket 0643. Would you please read it uh, into the record? Thank you. Docket 0643, Councilors Asabi George and Campbell offer the following resolution recognizing May as Haitian Heritage Month. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. The chair now recognizes the at-large council from Dorchester, Councilor Anissa Asabi George. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'd like to suspend Rule 12 and add Councillor Arroyo. Uh, Councillor Asabi George seeks suspension of the rules and the addition of Councillor Arroyo as an original co-sponsor. Seeing no objections, he is hereby added. Uh, Councillor, please proceed. Uh, thank you once again. I'm proud to offer this resolution recognizing May as Haitian Heritage Month in partnership with my colleagues, Councillor Campbell and Councillor Arroyo, and with all of you. Massachusetts has the third largest population of Haitian immigrants in the United States, with the majority living in Boston and our immediate neighbors. As an at-large city councilor, I'm honored to represent such a vibrant and thriving community 
including over 100 Haitian businesses and cultural organizations. I continue to be grateful for their role in keeping our community safe and healthy during this public health crisis. Our Haitian residents make up a large portion of our medical professionals and essential workers. In anticipation of Haitian Flag Day on May 18th, Bonfret Drapeau, I seek suspension of the rules and passage of this resolution in order to celebrate the entire Haitian community and Boston's residents of Haitian descent. Thank you very much, Councillor Sabi George. The chair now recognizes the district councillor from Mattapan, Councillor Andrea Campbell. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And of course, thank you to Councillor Sabi George and Councillor Arroyo for the partnership and the continued partnership on this particular resolution to celebrate the Haitian community and the incredible residents and businesses, of course, that are part of this rich community. Um, I'm really proud to have a large uh, percentage of Haitian uh, residents in my district. They have been supportive and partners in the work since I first joined the council. Um, and frankly, in the midst of COVID-19, and the, particularly at the beginning, mobilized their community to be able to support their neighbors, um, leading some incredible mutual aid groups, you name it. So it's always important, I think, to celebrate communities, the rich cultural backgrounds that we have in the city of Boston and that we're blessed to have here. And the Haitian community in particular is one that is strong, contributes enormously to the cultural fabric of this city as well as the economic uh, foundation of this city. So really honored to, to celebrate them and thank you to Councillors Asabi George and Arroyo again for the partnership. Thank you very much, Councillor Campbell. The chair now recognizes the district councillor from Hyde Park, Councillor Ricardo Arroyo. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, and thank you to Councillor Sabi George and Councillor Campbell for their partnership on this. Uh, the Haitian community is a large part of the fabric of District 5. Their businesses, uh, their entrepreneurship, their activism in our neighborhoods are a big part of what makes our neighborhoods go in District 5, Mattapan, Hyde Park, and Rosendale. Uh, but their example as a country and as a nation uh, their cultural values, their liberation in which they've liberated themselves and created a democracy that then went on to serve as an example to the country and to our country, but also the world, uh, it deserves endless praise. Uh, the example that they set amongst hardship as the uh, first uh, African of color nation uh, to have a democracy in the Northern Hemisphere and the hardships that they face as the country because of that throughout history, whether it be through Europe or North America, uh, and their ability to overcome that and to persevere uh, deserves uh, endless praise. And so I look forward to uh, not celebrating them that's just this month, but every month uh, as they bring so much to my community. But I thank Councillor Campbell and Councillor Sabi George for putting this together and ensuring that uh, we honor them this month uh, during Haitian Heritage Month. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arroyo. Is there any further discussion on uh, docket uh, 04643? Uh, the chair now recognizes the district councillor from South Boston, Councillor Flynn, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, please add my name. I just want to thank my colleagues for recognizing the outstanding contributions of the Haitian and Haitian American um, residents to our city and to our country. Mr. President, when I was younger, I had the opportunity to be stationed in Guantanamo during the Haiti earthquake. And we felt the earthquake um, over in Guantanamo, but I also seen up close the U.S. military, but also the people of the United States uh, relief effort helping the Haitian people. But we, Boston and in, in Port-au-Prince, but the United States and Haiti has always had a strong relationship. The Haitian people have contributed greatly to our city, to our country. They made America the great country it is. Our immigrant communities continue to make those same sacrifices, working hard, um, and being involved in so many activities in city government, the police force or the fire department, sanitation workers, public, public educators as well. But I'm just so proud to join my colleagues and to recognize the outstanding contributions and sacrifices of the Haitian community here in Greater Boston. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councillor Flynn. Madam Clerk, please add Councillor Ed Flynn as a co-sponsor. Chair now recognizes the at-large council from Rosendale. Councillor Michelle Wu, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to rise to ask that my name be added as well and to thank the lead sponsors for making sure that we are uh, getting on record <coughs> once again. I'm so honored to represent this community and to know so many incredible leaders who have paved the way in our city um, and just want to echo the importance of 
the Haitian American community, but also Haiti as an example all across the world for so many of the values that we hold dear in this city as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councilor Wu. Madam Clerk, please add Councilor Michelle Wu as a co-sponsor. Chair now recognizes the at-large council from Dorchester. Councilor Mejia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so I also rise to be added as a co-sponsor, and I thank um, the lead sponsors for uh, bringing this to the uh, floor. As a Dominican who shares the island with Haiti and understands the tension that has existed in our shared country, I know how important it is for us to build relationships and to celebrate the amazing work that the Haitian community has done here in the city of Boston. So here to support all of it, and thank you so much for following it. Thank you, Councilor Mejia. Madam Clerk, please add Councilor Julia Mejia as a co-sponsor. Uh, the chair now recognizes the at-large councilor from South Boston. Councilor Flaherty, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President, and thanks to the lead sponsor. Obviously, this is a great opportunity to recognize the uh, great contributions of the Haitian community uh, to our city and uh, as the host of the first annual uh, Haitian uh, flag raising uh, reception at City Hall uh, for the council, that tradition that has uh, been maintained uh, by uh, all the district councilors uh, since then. Uh, it's a great honor to have so many uh, friends from the Haitian community uh, that uh, I enjoy a great relationship with and uh, lasting friendships and support from the Haitian community. So uh, hopefully, um, you know, uh, as we recognize their great contributions, we'll also uh, take an opportunity to participate uh, in some of the events that they'll be hosting uh, throughout the month of May. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk. Please add Councillor Michael Flaherty as a co-sponsor. Seeing no further discussion, would any councillors wish to add their name? Madam Clerk, please add Councillor Baker, Councillor Bach, Councillor Edwards. Please add the chair's name. Uh, excuse me, please add Councillor Braden as well. Uh, we added Councillor Flaherty. And um, Madam Clerk, would you please uh, call the roll uh, on docket 0643. Thank you. Docket 0643, Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Aye. Councillor Baker, aye. Councillor Bach. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Sabi George. Yes. Councillor Sabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Mejia. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Council Wu, yes. Mr. President, docket number 0643 was adopted unanimously. Thank you very much, and thank you, Councillors Society, George Campbell and Arroyo, uh, and all colleagues for joining in. We are now moving on to personnel orders. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please place before the body docket 0644? Docket 0644, Council O'Malley for District 7, offered the following order. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Once again, this is uh, in the acting mayor's capacity as the District 7 Councillor. This is her uh, order that I am seeking suspension of the rules and passage of. So, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll on docket 0644? Thank you. Docket 0644, Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Aye. Councillor Baker, aye. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Sabi George. Yes. Councillor Sabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Mejia. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Councillor Wu, yes. Mr. President, uh, docket number 0644 passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk, moving right along to docket 0645. Docket 0645, Councillor O'Malley for Councillor Braden. Chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 0645. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Docket 0645, Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Aye. Councillor Baker, aye. Councillor Bach. Councillor Bach, aye. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Sabi George. Yes. Councillor Sabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Mejia. 
Council Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley and Council, yes. Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Mr. President, docket 0645 passed unanimously. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, we are now moving on to the late files and I informed by our wonderful clerk that there are no late file matters. Well done, everybody. Uh, moving right along to the green sheets, would any member wish to remove a matter before the green sheets? Uh, you may do so at this time. Seeing no takers, uh, moving right along to the consent agenda. We're now, uh, I've been informed by the clerk that there are zero additions to the consent agenda. So the chair moves for adoption of the consent agenda as presented. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? For the consent agenda, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Aye. Councilor Baker, aye. Councilor Bach. Aye. Councilor Bach, aye. Councilor Braden. Aye. Councilor Braden, aye. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Mejia. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Mr. President, the consent agenda was unanimously approved. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Uh, we are now at uh, the point of the meeting where if any counselors wish to make any announcements or have any statements, they may do so. Please indicate by pressing your call button or if you are virtual, just raise your physical hand. The chair recognizes the district council from Alston Brighton. Councilor Braden, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I'd just like to um, take a moment to remember uh, Jahira de Alto. Um, I was deeply saddened and angered by the murder of Jahira on Sunday. Um, she's a 42-year-old um, um, who was a beloved advocate and community member of the LGBT community. Um, I want to extend my deepest condolences uh, to her family, friends, colleagues, and classmates at Simmons, and to the friends and family of Fatima Yafin, who was also uh, killed in that tragic attack. No. Uh, the killing makes Jahira's um, um, death the 17th reported murder of a transgender person this year putting 2021 on track to be the deadliest on record for trans Americans. Uh, we must be all committed to ensure that Jahira is not just a number and that her, her life as a, uh, and the life of uh, as a trans person is not, uh, no more lives of trans people should be taken by violence. Um, I would ask that we remember uh, at the close of our uh, meeting this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Braden. Uh, we, we certainly shall, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate those remarks. Thank you, thank you for that. Chair now recognizes the District Councillor from Beacon Hill, Councillor Bach, the floor is yours. Thank you, um, Councillor O'Malley. Uh, we, we usually focus these announcements on things happening around and about the city of Boston, um, but it's been hard for me to ignore in the past week more really. Um, I have a number of friends in India who have been losing people left and right to the COVID, um, uh, second wave there um, and I just I really want to express um, uh, you know my my sense of the sort of like global failure that we have that even in the midst of us getting vaccinated and, and being in a, a city that's proud to be part of finding the get vaccine and getting it into arms that we somehow don't have the wherewithal to be at the same time um, making that happen in countries all over the world and that so many real people um, who have, you know, connections back to Boston, but it doesn't matter, um, are losing their lives in India right now. And I just think like anything that any of us can do to advocate for, um, you know, not letting profit motives, not letting intellectual property regimes be a barrier to um, saving life there and across the world. And just recognizing the, sh the massive short-sightedness of the fact that we're, like, we're in a global pandemic. Um, we're all interconnected. You would think we would know that after a year of this. I just um, wanted to ex express myself on that front. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, and very, thank you for acknowledging that and, and raising that very important issue, Councillor Bach. 
Uh, chair now recognizes the at-large counsel from Dorchester, Councillor Anissa Asaibi-George. The floor is yours. Thank you uh, for the indulgence, and I just want to echo Councillor Breeden's uh, uh, remarks regarding Jahira Vialto, as well as Fatima Yassin, and the impact of their um, murder, of the abuse that they sustained, and the, um, the, the impacts it has both on family, children that were present, the community, the neighborhood, and the extended, especially the LGBTQ community uh, that's been so um, impacted by the events of last weekend. Just you know, want to uh, echo and reiterate the sentiments of the Boston City Council and our, um, you know, our, our recognition of these lives that were lost and the impact that they had on our city. And just wanted to, to echo Council Breeden's comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sabi George. The chair now recognizes the district council from East Boston. Councillor Edwards, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, uh, just a couple quick announcements and acknowledgements of some losses. One, I, um, I failed to mention, I think a week or two ago, about the loss of uh, a friend of many of us, Peter Lynn, Marcus's mother, Alice, um, Alice Lee Lynn. Um, she was a scientist for NASA. She had an incredible career. And she was pretty much Peter's world. And for many of us, Peter touched all of our worlds politically, personally, as a friend. Um, and I just, you know, I just want to acknowledge to him um, and to the rest of the world that we, we, when he was, his pain hit a lot of us. So I want to acknowledge that. I also wanted to, to wish our fellow colleague and Chelsea well. Um, City Councilor Damali, Damali Rido is, uh, she's going through some COVID related issues. She's public about that, but we just, you know, as city councilors, you know, she's a colleague. She knows the pressures that we deal with. And Chelsea was, as you know, ground zero for Massachusetts and that, you know, one of the city councilors and one of the leaders there is also still dealing with this. I just wanted to wish her well um, from all of us, I'm sure, uh, to let um, Damali know that we are still thinking of her. And then um, not knowing too many details, but knowing that there's a pained person uh, the mother of Michaela. Michaela is a woman, a uh, young woman out in um, Hopkington who is uh, no longer here. And what, the controversy of why she's not here is not why I'm bringing this up. The fact that she, her loss, the pain that her mother must feel, and what she's going through as a woman, as a black woman, and dealing with what we think and what people are starting to wonder if there was not racially motivated um, act or crime out in Hopkington. I, I want to say her name. I want people to acknowledge that, and I want people to know we're watching and seeing that. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards, and, and, and I have listed Michaela Miller as one of the people oh. for whom we'll be closing, so thank you for bringing up uh, the tragic story as well. Uh, Chair now recognizes the at-large council from South Boston. Councillor Flaherty, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. As I uh, think about um, my mom, um, the late and amazing Peg Flaherty, this Mother's Day weekend, I just want to give a shout out to um, the moms on the council, I, um, you know, this job uh, is hot enough as it is. And so hopefully uh, they get uh, feeded to a relaxing, stress-free weekend in their homes. And uh, to my wife, who does an amazing job with uh, my children, just want to wish uh, her as well a happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Councillor Flaherty. I, I, I would echo that to the moms, the grandmoms, the aunts, the big sisters, the cousins, the friends, the honorary aunts. Uh, happy Mother's Day. We'll be celebrating it for the first time in my house this weekend, which is very exciting. Um, and then I just briefly wanted to take an opportunity to thank all of you, my colleagues. Um, as you know, I was very anxious for us to get back in a safe and controlled way. I think that this first meeting back has been a remarkable success. So thank you for your uh, leadership in making it happen. And thank you particularly to Kerry Jordan, a name that is said. Let's hear it for him. Carrie's, uh, Carrie's name is often invoked as just the, the all-star of central staff. He made this happen, and honestly, I think that this is the future of this body, to be able to have this viral interaction for hearings. Obviously, we'll have, when it's safe to do so, people back in the chamber, but just to be able to have sort of this seamless uh, opportunity is, uh, is just really remarkable. So thank you, Carrie, and, and the incredible team of central staff. Um, uh, the chair recognizes one more time the uh, district council from South Boston, Councillor Flynn, the floor is yours. Um, the passing of um, uh, Margaret Lynch's mother, Mrs. Shaughnessy. Um, she is in our prayers during this, this time. 
Her family is in our prayers and thoughts. Um, she was a wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, I knew her very well, as did Councilor Flaherty. Um, so our, our prayers go to the Shaughnessy and, and the Lynch family as well. And over the weekend, we had the opportunity to attend the funeral mass for Fire Commissioner Stapleton. We spoke about the passing of Leo last week, but I just wanted to let, the, let our colleagues know that I attended the funeral mass on behalf of the city council and, and Mayor Janey was at the wake as well. Um, but Leo was a wonderful person, um, one of the best fire commissioners in the country and a member of um, the United States Navy World War II. He will be missed. He was a great friend to all. So thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me to say a few words about my friend Leo. Of course. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Flynn. Seeing no further announcements, um, we will now close. Thank you all colleagues who brought up some of the just remarkable people for whom we are closing this meeting. Uh, for Councillor Bach, Helen Ellison. For Councillors Flaherty, Flynn, and the Chair, Helen M. Shaughnessy. For the Chair on behalf of the entire City Council, Michaela Miller. For Councillors Baker, Asabi George, on behalf of the entire City Council. Uh, two victims whose names we will not release yet in Taft Street, whom we lost this week. And also on behalf of the entire City Council, Fatima Yassin and Jahira M. D'Alto Valenciaga. A moment of silence, please. The chair moves that when council adjourned today, it does so in memory of the aforementioned individuals. We are scheduled to meet again on Wednesday, May 12th at 12 noon. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The council is hereby adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Let's hear it for...